All right, the next example, we have the quadratic function f of x equals opposite of x squared minus 8x plus 5. So basically what we can see, a is negative 1, b is negative 8, and c is 5. If we're asked to find the vertex by hand, we recall the vertex formula. The vertex formula tells me that x is equal to the opposite of b over 2a. You need to commit that fact to memory. That's the opposite of, that's part of the formula, b is a negative 8 and a is a negative 1. So we have an awful lot of negatives here, but look what happens. This negative and this negative cancel, but this one still remains. So that means my answer is negative, and it turns out to be a negative 4. So we now know what the x-coordinate of, of our vertex is, and that is going to be a negative 4. All right? Now, to find the y-coordinate, we plug this into the function. We find f of negative 4. That would be the opposite of negative 4 squared minus 8 times negative 4 plus 5. This is 16, but this is the opposite of 16, plus 32, plus 5. So we end up getting, what, 16 plus 5, right? So, yep, 16 plus 5 is 21. So the vertex of this parabola is the ordered pair negative 4, comma, 21. Remember the axis of symmetry is always the line x equals, and it's whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is, so our answer is x equals negative 4. In fact, anytime you write x equals opposite of b over 2a, that is the equation for the axis of symmetry. You just have to complete it. Axis of symmetry always has to have x equals in it, not just the number, because it's an equation of that vertical line. When you're asked to find the y-intercept by hand, first of all remember that the y-intercept is an ordered pair. The x value of that ordered pair is always zero. So to find the y-intercept of any function, you're really plugging zero in for x. So when we find f of zero, you're always plugging in a zero for x when you're looking for the y-intercept. You have the opposite of zero squared minus 8 times 0 plus 5 and of course that's easy to compute that would just be 5. Another way to think about this is anytime the function is given in this form ax squared plus bx plus c this constant number is always the y value here. So c always gives us the y-intercept as long as we remember to write it as an ordered pair so in this case 0, 5. Y-intercept is always an ordered pair. Okay, we're asked to sketch the graph. Alright. Uh, the ordered pair negative 4, 21. The X value I'm okay with. The Y value is a little bad. So you know what we're going to do? How about we do this? How about we change? We'll let the X value, you know, we'll let the X scale be, be normal. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my y scale. Let's go by let's go by like fives. So let the y scale equal five. So what that means is every tick mark on the y axis is really going to be five units. So negative four twenty one. I'm going to let the x scale alone. X scale is not going to change. That's just going to be one. So negative 4, negative 4, 21, but we count by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, and a little past that. Okay? That is our, um, that is our vertex, the ordered pair 
negative 4 comma 21. My y-intercept is 0, 5. But since the y-scale is 5, every tick mark represents 5, so it's right there. So my graph is going to open and cross the y-axis here. And symmetry is going to take over for this side. So that's roughly what my picture looks like. If I drew in this line, which is x equals negative 4, that's my axis of symmetry. So this is a rough, you know, very rough sketch of the graph, but good enough to get what we need out of it. And what we need out of it is this. The relative extrema means what is the relative max and what is the relative min. Well, let's see, the relative minimum here, this graph keeps dropping. So the correct answer for relative minimum would be none. Some of you I know on my past tests have written negative infinity, which I would give you credit for, because you're telling me that the graph just drops off and never stops the y value. Relative maximum is the largest y value, and our largest y value here, of course, occurs at the vertex, and that would be the number 21. And we're done.